there are three types of seismic analysis procedure. We can calculate the effect of earth earthquakes on our structures using three methods. One is equivalent lateral force procedure ELF and the seismicity is represented or the earthquake hazard is represented in this method using SS and S1 right for our site. This method is based on the idea that we can calculate some equivalent static forces in lateral direction uh, which will be the representative of future earthquake and then we apply them to our computer model and analyze that model, design that model. This will become seismic design using e ELF. right? So, ELF actually explains how to compute those equivalent static forces. Obviously, they will be the function of the level of seismic hazard of your site as defined by your SS and S1. The second method is RSA response spectrum analysis and in this method the future earthquake is not represented by SS and S1 only. It is represented by the complete response spectrum of future earthquake and it is the graph between spectral acceleration versus time. So, now you do not only need two numbers on this curve corresponding to 0.2 second and 1 second. Now, you need the complete curve as an input and or as the representative of the seismic loading. right? And obviously, as we have discussed in detail in last lectures that we have two approaches or two options in this in this uh, manner or this case actually. One is that we use code equation to construct this future response spectrum design spectrum. Another is that we perform the detailed PSHA site specific PSHA and construct the hazard curves for our site and then pick one number from each curve and plot the spectrum. That is the accurate method. So, again just like the ground response analysis we again have two options. Option 1 code equation and option 2 the site specific PSHA. So, again code will guide us that for what cases you should go for site specific and for what cases you can use the code equation. right? Obviously, there will be some incentives for designer to go for site specific PSHA. Site specific PSHA is anyways uh, obviously is, is more accurate. right? So, if you can go for that option that is the most accurate thing and one incentive in that is that if you get a number lower than building code then you will be justified in using that and bringing economy in your structure if you can go for that detailed exercise of site specific PSHA. If you cannot go then use code equation. Code equation simply uses SS, SS and S1 and it can give you the complete curve. right? You just put SS and S1 two points and it will make all the curve. The third analysis method is time history analysis also known as the response history analysis RHA or THA and obviously all three methods are uh, will be requiring linear elastic analysis model. right? Time history analysis uh, obviously is a rigorous dynamic analysis you know that and it requires the complete time history u g dot dot versus time graph as an input for this analysis. So, uh, this method third method is the most accurate because it really excites your computer model in dynamic uh, movement. The other two essentially are static methods because they are based on application of uh, static forces to your computer model as a representative of future ground shaking. right? So, the real earthquake is actually a shaking it is not a force. So, this third one is the most accurate because it uh, will handle all those dynamic effects. If the resonance have to occur third method can capture that not first two. If any other dynamic effect uh, you have to capture you have to go for third option. right? Generally RSA is also sometimes referred to as the dynamic analysis, but actually if you see it is it, it can be maximum called as pseudo dynamic because uh, ultimately the forces which you calculate uh, as the representative of future earthquake you apply them as static forces. So, you really do not shake your model in RSA. Why it is called dynamic analysis sometimes because the those static forces 
are calculated based on the building's mode shapes and time periods. So, some degree of dynamics, some information about the dynamics of your building is somehow involved in their calculation, but still it is not the rigorous dynamic analysis. right? So, the building code recognize these three methods for the seismic design and all three will require a linear elastic computer model, because a non-linear computer model uh, is very difficult to uh, construct. It requires a lot of time and expertise, which may not be warranted for each and every project uh, by an ordinary design office. So, building code mostly recommend non-linear analysis for detailed evaluation or design check or structural retrofitting for example, uh, but for conventional design method, it recommends a linear elastic model subjected to any three of any any of these three methods depending upon the building complexity and this is exactly what is our topic today that how we will reach actually to any one of these three methods right for any given building. So, uh, the science of each of these method is a separate topic actually. One thing is uh, that when a building code recommends a linear elastic model for uh, any of these three methods it have different coefficients or different ways to account for the possible nonlinear effects. So, building code recommends a linear model which cannot actually account for cracking, yielding or any other inelastic phenomena. So, uh, the approach is that it recommends different factors like uh, crack stiffness modifiers, like R factor, like any other factors which approximately accounts for the inelastic effects. So, the computer model which you will be using for these methods will not know what is cracking, it will not be aware of any damage, it will not be aware of any other nonlinear phenomena. right? So, we will tune it or we will account for those nonlinear phenomena using some factors which will be very approximate by the way right? and this is one of the major limitation of linear elastic analysis the model will not be able to tell anything about the damage. right? So, you will just take co code coefficients and put it in the analysis to approximately account for those inelastic phenomena. The performance based design on the other hand is based on nonlinear analysis. right? So, this is a very basic difference between both of these design philosophies. One is basing it is everything on linear elastic model and then tuning it for any inelastic phenomena. The other says that you should not have these empirical coefficients, because case to case basis they may not be applicable and they are very approximate. So, you why not you actually simulate the inelastic behavior of your building and check for each project whether it is performing its performance is satisfactory or not. So, your uh, computer model in conventional seismic analysis procedure will not be damage aware, right? but it will be damage aware uh, in PBD. Right? 